Well, again, thank you so much for being in the service this morning, and it is great to worship together and be reminded of the basic truths of God's Word and what He has to say to us. And I also want to welcome those who are listening online. Thank you so much for being a part of the service and for tuning in as well. We've been in a series, and today we're going to conclude this series that, where we've been talking about the wilderness and reminding us that some of the best lessons you will ever learn in your life will happen in the wilderness. And some of the best truths that we need to recognize that are unfolding in our lives is when we can learn those in the, in, in the wilderness. And so in this series where we've been talking about the wilderness, we're going to finish off by talking about the pain that is in the wilderness. Isn't it exciting just to come to church and talk about pain? All right, and so uh, I'd rather I'd rather be in a bouncy castle or something else. All right, and, and then talk about pain. But pain sometimes, many times, and most of the time, can be there to teach you some incredible lessons that sometimes you think, well, God's not a part of that pain, but oh yes, He is. And so today, I want us to look at the pain that's in the wilderness, and so we're going to be looking at that. Uh, so far in this experience, we talked in week one about how. Uh, Jesus was tempted or tested in the wilderness, and we are too, and how we can stand firm in the midst of that. Uh, second week, we talked about having patience in the wilderness, and we all love that word, patience, right? And you learn to be patient in the wilderness, and, so, um, and how God can give us incredible wisdom if we learn to wait. Last week, Pastor Nicholas did a stellar job reminding us about how we need to step back and listen for God's leading in those times in the wilderness. And so today I want to close out the series and talking to you about the pain that we often experience in the wilderness. And the pain that we're talking about today sometimes comes into our life is not because you did something bad. The pain that you experience sometimes in your life is not because you did something wrong. Sometimes pain just comes and is a part of the journey of life. And some of you know that all too well. The health issues you're going through, the things that you have experienced in your, in your life, you didn't wake up one morning and say, oh, I would love to have those health issues or I would love to have those scars on my life from the pain that I had. Pain is something that is there and it's, that's a part of the journey and oftentimes it's not because you did something wrong or something bad. I know sometimes that's popular thinking. If I'm going through some suffering or pain, it's because I did something wrong. I must have really upset God. That's, that's not right, all right? And so we need to remind ourselves that pain, first of all, is not because you did something bad or wrong, but you'll still experience pain. Even if you are doing the right thing, you can still experience pain in life. Isn't that exciting? You can... So pain is a part of the journey that we have here in life. But I also want to remind you that pain is, is something that is here on earth, but it's only temporary. Pain doesn't last for all eternity, right? Pain is just something that's for here and now. Just kind of give you something to really um, kind of catch your attention a little bit. But it's not here forever. Matter of fact, I love what Revelation 21.4 says. It says, he will wipe away. Every tear from your eyes, and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, and here it is, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. So, pain is something that's temporary. Pain is something that's here on earth. Even if we do the right things, we will still experience pain. And so, and you're probably thinking, okay, pastor, get to the good stuff, all right? And to help me to sort of deal with this pain and what I'm going through. Well, today's character that I want us to look at is from the life of Joseph in the Old Testament. Joseph, man, oh man, he, he, got, he got sucker punched every time he turned around. And, and in the midst of it all, he learned to deal with the pain and the suffering he was going through that really wasn't his fault at all. So if you have your Bibles today, we are in Genesis chapter 37, Genesis 37, and verses 18 to 27. I want to read for you just a, a quick synopsis of the story of what Joseph went through. Okay, so Joseph is who we're going to learn from today, and then I want to give you three 
principles or three truths that help Joseph to come through his time of pain that I believe with all my heart that will help you to come through your times of pain and difficulty. And by the way, this morning, if you're going through that right now, I want to tell you as your pastor, I'm sorry for what you're, you've gone through maybe in the past and pain, maybe the pain of hurt and abuse and the pain of maybe what you're experiencing today in your life. And I wish I could take you and take away all your pain, but I can't. But I want you to know that you can come through your pain and you can be victorious. You can be strong. And so, and from the life of Joseph, we can learn how to do that. So let me read Genesis 37, verses 18 to 27. Let me jump in on it quickly from the New Living Translation. When Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him at a distance. As he approached, they, they made plans to kill him. How do you like that? I like that for siblings. All right. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into these cisterns. And we can tell our father that a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. And Joseph, prior to this, he told his brothers and his family about dreams. And in those dreams, they seemed to indicate that they were going to bow down to him someday. And of course, don't you love it when your family members, your brother or sister said, hey, you're going you're, you're gonna to bow down to me one day. <laughs> they didn't like that at all. So they were quite ticked off, to put it mildly. And, and they said, we'll see what becomes of his dreams. But when Reuben heard of their scheme, he came to Joseph's rescue. He said, let's not kill him, he said. Why should we shed any blood? Let's just throw him in the empty cistern here in the wilderness. Then he'll die without laying a hand on him. Reuben was secretly planning to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. So when Joseph arrived, the brothers ripped off that beautiful robe he was wearing, that coat of many colors, and then they grabbed him and threw him down into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Then, just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and they saw a caravan of camels in the distance coming towards them. It was a group of Ishmaelite traders taking a load of gum and balm and aromatic resin uh, from Gilead down to Egypt. Joseph, or not Joseph, but Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain by killing our brother? We, we have to cover up the crime. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood, and his brothers agreed. And we'll stop there in the story. So there you go. He's coming out to hang out with his brothers. And what do they do? They grab him. They rip off that beautiful coat of many colors. They throw him down in a dry well. And then they sell him to a bunch of traders who are on their way down to Egypt. And he doesn't know what's going to happen. What a sequence of events that's unfolded. And so Joseph gets sold into slavery there in Egypt. And his life takes a turn for the worse. He didn't ask for it. He didn't wake up and plan for it. He didn't necessarily, he didn't do anything wrong. He was just telling them about the dreams that God gave him. He didn't do anything wrong, but yet pain came into his life. Pain he didn't plan for. He didn't know what was going to happen. And so Joseph really had himself a very significant challenge as he was sold into slavery and all the twists and turns that his life has taken. Today, your life has a lot of twists and turns too. I know it does. But as we look at the story, I want you to learn these truths so that you can apply them to your life as well. So here are the truths uh, that take it away from, from Joseph's life. Number one, pain can be caused by someone else. When you're experiencing pain in your life, it can be caused by someone else. A broken marriage sometimes is, you didn't plan to, have, to get divorced or have a broken marriage or home, but it happened. For whatever reason, maybe someone else chose that pathway and you had no control over it whatsoever. In this story, we clearly see that Joseph's brothers were scheming with one another to try and find a way to get rid of Joseph. And, and after deciding not to kill him, they decide to sell him. But Joseph, the pain he had in his life, he had no control over it. It happened because of someone else. Someone else's anger, someone else's jealousy. And maybe some of you here today are experiencing something, maybe here in the present, or maybe something in the past that has hurt you and harmed you and caused pain in your life, but you had no control over it. 
you suffered that pain because of someone else. And again, I'm sorry for that. And so Joseph was someone who experienced that pain, not because he did anything wrong, but because of someone else and their anger, their jealousy over who he was. And so today, I want us to think about that as we experience pain in the wilderness. Maybe, you're, uh, maybe uh, you come from a broken home where one parent who's simply stopped loving the other parent and you suffered because of the scars of that broken home and, and the separation that came because of it. You didn't do anything wrong, but that pain came because of someone else. Or maybe you were fired from a job and maybe you didn't see it coming and you're still not sure why you actually got fired, but it happened. And, uh, but yet the pain nonetheless is real. It didn't happen. It came upon you from somebody else. Or maybe you experienced abuse at the hands of other people and you didn't, you didn't, you didn't want it, but it, it was out of your control what happened to you. And so you experienced pain in your life. But what I want to say this morning is regardless of how you find yourself experiencing pain right now or pain from your past, oftentimes we just don't have control over when it gets introduced into our lives. And Joseph, I think, realizing that, at this point in the story, Joseph, he had a very crucial decision to make. And to put it in my words, not Joseph's words, his decision he had to make was, am I going to be defined by my pain or will I choose to allow God to still work through it? Think about it. Joseph, at that time, he could have said, you know, look who I am. Look what those dirty rascals did to me. But Joseph was someone who, real, even though the pain was all because of other people around him, he had, to real, he had to think it through. How am I going to respond to this pain? Can God still work through this pain even though I didn't ask for it and it came upon me because of somebody else? The answer is yes, as we look at the story of Joseph. And today, I think the same question is really meant for many of us who may be thinking about our lives as it relates to sometimes the pain or the challenges that come our way. Maybe health issues come your way and other issues uh, financial issues that come your way and oftentimes you have no control over what's happening but the question is is are you going to let God use it Joseph was someone in the midst of his pain he had no control over it but he was going to trust God even though he had no control he was going to trust God to bring him through so the question for you this morning and for those listening online is will you trust God and let him bring you through that pain, even though you didn't ask for it. You didn't want it. You didn't do anything wrong. You have no control over it. It just thrust upon you. But yet God can still bring you through it and help you to be stronger and victorious. Number two, not only do we need to recognize that sometimes pain happens because of somebody else, but number the second principle I see coming out of the life of Joseph is how we see our suffering matters. How we see our suffering matters. In other words, what kind of lens are you looking through when you're dealing with those moments of suffering and pain? When Joseph was on his way to Egypt, and you, can you imagine the feelings he must have had as he was there thinking, my, what did my family do? They're supposed to love me and be there for me, but instead they've selling me off. They're abandoning me. If I can't count on my family, who can I count on? And so the pain that he had was real. And as we read this story, let's not forget he was a real person who really probably loved his family. His whole identity is built around his family. But when he was on his way to Egypt, he was wrestling with all these feelings of how could this happen to him? How was he going to deal with the circumstance? What were these traitors going to do with him? What was going to happen to him in Egypt? Wow, you talk about a lot of unknowns. He didn't know what was exactly going to be on the other side of his, enslavery, of his enslavement. But because of, of his history and because of his faith, he knew he served a God who had the power to make the most of it all and use it all for good. He knew God had the power to make the most of it. He didn't know what was going to happen, but he knew this God that he served would still use it for good. He knew that he had to trust God every step of the way, even when he didn't understand it. And if he did that, he would gain a perspective in the middle of all of his pain 
that would bring him through. And see, this morning I want to remind us that as you go through your times of pain, you don't know what's on the other side. You don't know where it's going to take you or where it's going to lead you. But I can tell you this. It may be where you start, but you don't have to finish there. And what I mean by that is that you may start with pain in your life, but you know what? If you let God come, he can take that pain and use it and finish you. I'm going to say finish you off. I don't want to do that. All right. But he will help you to finish at a place where you will be so much better. But you've got to learn to trust him even though you don't know what's on the other side. That's the godly perspective of pain. Though this is where I am, where I'm starting, it's not where I'm going to finish. I love what Romans chapter 5, verse 3 says about that very fact. It says, not only that we rejoice in our sufferings. Can you imagine rejoicing in your sufferings? He says that. Not only, but we rejoice in our sufferings. And why does he rejoice? He says, knowing that suffering produces endurance. In other words, I started here, but by golly, I'm going to end up here. And see, folks, that's what happens sometimes in our pain. If we just see all the pain and we don't see God at work through it all, we will get stuck and we'll become bitter and crusty and, and the whole world stinks and everybody's out to get me and I can't trust anybody, I can't do anything, I am nobody, I am nothing. See what I mean? We get caught in that thinking. But if we can begin to really have a better perspective, a godly perspective, that yes, you may have gone through pain, but you don't have to stay there. Come on. Don't stay there. Don't let that pain rob you of the rest of your life. Don't let that pain take away the joy that you should have every day as you live your life for Christ. And the only way you can do that is to begin to realize that through that pain, God can bring out something that is beautiful and so much better. As a matter of fact, when I was researching this message, many of the world's greatest and most beautiful souls became their best selves. Hear me when I say this. They became their best selves, not in spite of pain, but because of their pain. Let me give you some examples. The great hymn writer, uh, Cowper, who wrote many hymns, and, and he wrote great hymns of hopefulness and, and, and so forth, and, and even... The, uh, he was someone who struggled uh, with contemplating suicide. Uh, Van Gogh was another one he, who brushed epic paintings while contemplating suicide. Charles Spurgeon preached some of his best sermons while he was depressed and, and, and really didn't know if he was going to make it another day. Abraham Lincoln, Winston Churchill, Martin Luther King battled melancholy, just severely melancholy. Could hardly sometimes think if they could get out of bed. The great composer Beethoven was, went death. C.S. Lewis buried his wife after a short cancer-ridden marriage. Uh, Corey Tim Boone survived survived the Holocaust. Joni Erickson Tata uh, lost her ability to walk because of a tragic accident. And I, the list can go on, folks, of people in their pain. They became their best selves because they took on a different perspective. Come on. Pain in the wilderness, it's not nice. But you can come through if you trust God. You don't know what tomorrow brings. I don't know what tomorrow brings. But trust them. Matter of fact, when I look at the life of Joseph, Joseph and all he went through in his time in Egypt, he ran from temptations, he interpreted dreams, he got thrown into prison for something he didn't do. Uh, you think just being sold into slavery would be enough, but it didn't stop there for him. In all those moments, even on the mountaintop or whether he was in the valley, in all those moments, one of the common phrases that I see showing up every time when I read the story of Joseph is the phrase that went like this. All this happened, but the Lord was with Joseph. You see what I mean? He went through all of that pain and suffering, but the Lord was with Joseph. This morning, I want to say as your pastor that the Lord is with you today. No matter what you're experiencing, God sees you, sees exactly what you're going through, and he understands your pain. The question is, do you see him in the midst of all your pain? So this morning, 
we need to be reminded of that principle as we look at the life of Joseph, that we've got to have that kind of perspective coming through. The last thing I'm going to say, then I'll be done. See, yeah, well, maybe not an hour, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm a little longer. The last thing I want to say is God doesn't waste our wilderness. He doesn't waste our wilderness. Sure, you may be in the wilderness today, but it's not because you've taken a detour. You might be exactly where you need to be. And there's an opportunity for you to become your best self as you come through it. God doesn't waste your wilderness experiences. The story of Joseph goes on and tells us that he was put in charge of the distribution of food. He came through all of the things he went through. And next thing you know, he became the second most powerful person in all of Egypt. And so everyone from the surrounding lands, because of a great fam famine, I came um, and really began to ask him for food and to bow at his feet. And the Bible tells us that on one particular day, Joseph's brothers came to gather food. And after recognizing it was him, especially after their father Jacob had passed away, and I'm moving through the story quickly here, they became fearful that Joseph would seek revenge because of what they did to him years earlier. And to be honest, that would pop into my mind. <laughs> Oh boy, I would say this is, this is what I've been waiting for. But he didn't. He didn't. Genesis chapter 50 and verses 19 and 20, it tells us there, but Joseph replied, he says, don't be afraid of me. He could have been bitter. He could have been crusty. He had every reason, right? But he wasn't. But Joseph said in that last chapter of Genesis, he says, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. God doesn't waste those moments in the wilderness. We may think it's a waste. We may think we've been sidelined because we're going through difficult moments, difficult challenges, but you're not sidelined. No matter where you are in your journey, let God use you right there and not waste those moments. You may think the health problems you're having is something that's sidelining you and, and stopping you from being the person you need to be. No, it's not. Take that pain and let God use it so that he can begin to use you in those moments. You may think you're going through financial stress and it's sidelining you and stopping you from doing all you need to do. No, that's not true. God is with you, and he can bring you through those moments of pain. What was intended to harm you, and we know Satan certainly wants to do that, God intended it all for good. That's why I love Romans 8.28, and I'm just about done. In Romans 8.28, it says, And we know that those who love God, all things work together for good. Do you believe it? Those who love God all things, or maybe some things, maybe it's only some things, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. And I close with this story. The story of Corey uh, Ten Boom and actually her sister uh, Betsy, probably many of you heard this story, but I close my message with this story. The sisters who found themselves in the German concentration camp in the midst of World War II, they were assigned to an absolutely filthy barracks. I mean, it was really filthy, even beyond the most filthiest one. And it happened to be infested with fleas. And as the sisters settled in, Betsy encouraged them um, to begin their day every day to thank God for everything they have in the concentration camp. To thank God for everything that they had whether it be good or bad, and so they began thanking God for the situation until they got to the fleas. Corey simply said, I can't bring myself to be thankful for those fleas, but Betsy reminded her, the Bible reading that they had earlier that day from 1 Thessalonians, give thanks in every circumstance. Betsy encouraged Corey to uh, be thankful even for the fleas. So, as the story unfolds, Corey reluctantly agreed and they gave thanks that day for the fleas. As the weeks pressed on, Betsy 
eventually found out that the German guards refused to come into their barracks because it was infested by the fleas. The sisters had experienced incredible freedom inside their living quarters to share the gospel with other prisoners and with other people. They encouraged others and had tremendous freedom to move about as the Lord directed them. And it was all because of the fleas. So, I'm not saying you've got fleas today you need to be thankful for. But give thanks. Even in the pain in the wilderness, God can work everything out to the good for those who love him. This morning, I know in this day and age, and as your pastor, I know the burdens you're carrying. And some days, I'll tell you honestly, I weep for you. Because I know it's real. I know it's real. And I wish I could take away your pain. I can't. But I know a God that if you stay true to him, he will help you become your best self in spite of the pain, in spite of the hurt, in spite of the wilderness. So this morning, look up, for your Lord is with you. Your God is with you. Put your trust in him and know that God is working all things for the good. Let's stand together. Lord, this morning, I want to thank you for your faithfulness to us. And Lord, like Corey, I don't know if I could be thankful for everything. I don't know if I could be thankful for fleas. Or, but God, in your sovereignty and in your power and your wisdom, you can really, even in the midst of our pain, use it all for good. And so Lord, this morning, if there's someone here today who's carrying a, just a tremendous weight and a heaviness, wonder maybe they're being sidelined because of what they're going through. Lord, help them to not believe that lie. But Lord, help them realize that even in these moments, even when there's pain in the journey, and maybe you've done nothing wrong, you've done nothing bad, but you're still going through that pain, Lord, help us to trust you, knowing that you will work all things out to the good. And so, Lord, today, speak to your people, shepherd our lives, shepherd our homes. And just as we pause for a moment, matter of fact, with every head bowed and every eye closed, give your neighbor some privacy. If you're here this morning and you simply, by an uplifted hand, want to indicate, Pastor, I have pain I'm going through, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to come through it. I don't know. I'm feeling the weight of it. But if you have that pain today that you're sensing, you're feeling in your life, I want you to raise your hand up and put it back down. Just let me see it. Sure. Absolutely. You can put your hand down. Anyone else? I want to pray for you. Sure. I want to pray for you. I want to lift you up. And God sees your hand. And he knows your pain. Lord, this morning... I pray for these hands. I pray for these people. And I'm asking the Holy Spirit that you would intercede and that you would come and be that soothing, refreshing, anointing upon their life that only you can be. God, speak to them, encourage them through their pain and through their difficulty. And Lord, help them to trust you even though they don't know where it's going to lead to they don't know what's on the other side but Lord we do know that pain is temporary one day you will wipe away every tear one day you will eradicate every pain and Lord what a day that will be what a day that will be God speak to us and shepherd us this day and help us to be drawn closer to you And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.